taking cuttings is one of those garden skills that seems like it only exists within the realm of advanced gardening, but truly it's not. It's one of the simplest forms of propagating or duplicating plants that you already own and you can do it with so many varieties of plants especially at this time of year when plants are putting on new growth so today i am going to be showing you how to propagate hydrangeas and also grapes if you can hear the peeping behind me that is actually our guineas uh, I hope they don't start screeching, but whenever I'm doing something in the garden, they come to investigate. So if you're more interested about having guinea fowl in your garden, we do have a video on raising them, which you can click on here. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I actually took hydrangea cuttings last fall from three great big hydrangea bushes that I had behind me here. So I have six hydrangea cuttings here and I've put bags over the top of all of them uh, to create humidity. They need a humid environment. It's really important when you're taking hydrangea cuttings not to let them dry out. And there's a story as to why they are no longer there and his name is Samson. Look at the color of you! Samson is our great Pyrenees puppy and if I just show you Backstage, there he is, lovingly waiting for me to give my attention to him once again. Whenever I'm in the garden, he is in the garden too. And it's only natural that he's going to copy what he sees me doing, which is a lot of digging in the garden. So as you can imagine, my hydrangea bushes and my peony bushes, some of my raised beds and other areas of the garden haven't taken too kindly to Samson the Great, uh, being present with his digging and chewing and ultimately just using the garden as his dog bed. So that's why taking cuttings is such a good skill to learn. Either you might want to duplicate plants that you already have, or <laughs> if your plants get completely destroyed and you're in the nick of time like I was, then you can save some of those um, destroyed sections of plant, if you like, trim it down and reroute them, which is basically all taking a cutting is. So let's get to it. So the key to taking cuttings is literally keeping the plant alive while it develops new roots. So when you take a cutting, you, as I'll show you, you're going to take a section of plant, you're putting it in the soil and you're trying to support its life until it develops new roots, which takes approximately about 10 days at this time of year. As you know, plants take up water by their roots and they lose water from the surfaces of their leaves, like sweating, which is called transpiration. So there's a cycle of water that moves through the plant. Now, when you've taken a cutting, obviously the plant does not have roots any longer. But what it does still do is it still transpires, so it still loses water from the leaves. So two of the key things that we need to do is we need to reduce the amount of leaves because the bigger the surface area, the more water that the plant can lose. And we also want to keep it in a really humid environment because what that will do is it will slow down the transpiration rate while you're trying to establish the roots. So in this tray here, we've mainly got hydrangeas and then we've got one grape on the end here. And so I'm gonna prepare another grape now so that you can see the step-by-step -step process. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a hole down the side of my soil because on the side next to the plastic, it doesn't dry out as fast. When I was pruning my grapes, I basically just put the bits that I cut off the grapevine in a jar and they've probably been in this jar of water for about a week. So I'm now going to take them, I was just doing that to keep them alive. So I'm now gonna take them and I'm going to um, pop, put them into some soil. So what we've got here is a part of the stem, it's got leaves and it's got some uh, nodes here, which is where the leaves grow from. Now we want to reduce the surface area as much as possible. Once the leaves have been cut off, what can happen is that the plant can grow roots from this um, place. The cells can actually what's called reorganize themselves um, into a different type of cell. So instead of growing a leaf, it can actually grow roots. So the goal is to get as many of these nodes below the surface of the soil as possible. And you'll know if it's working or not, because 
if it's working, then the plant will stay alive. Um, and if it's not working, the plant will flop over and look like it's dying. So with taking hydrangea cuttings, you can take it either from um, stems that have got a bloom on or stems without, and both of them will root equally well. However, I always go for the stems that do not have a bud on first. Now with hydrangea cuttings, you're going to cut directly below a leaf set because that's where the concentrated group of cells are to form new roots. And then what I'm going to do on this plant stem is I'm actually going to cut it back down to where the next leaf node is so that this plant, the bush, um, will heal quickly without getting any infection or disease. So I found that using a tote is a really good way of creating humidity. At this time of year, if you're in a zone similar to us, six or higher, then it's probably sufficiently warm outside as to where you can just keep your cuttings in a shaded part of the garden. If you saw my Instagram video of taking the hydrangea cuttings last fall, um, you'll see that you can actually work with Ziploc bags. Um, however, I wouldn't recommend it if you have a puppy around because it seemed far too enticing for Samson to resist. And that is how all of my uh, hydrangeas last fall met with a sudden death. And in about 10 days, um, if you just give the stems of the plant a little bit of a tug, you'll be able to feel whether they've established roots or not because they won't lift very easily. At that point, you can actually then start to pot them up into bigger pots and you can keep them um, in pots for a while until they become a lot more established. Or if you feel that they're strong enough, you can go ahead and plant them in a raised bed or a planter outdoors. The idea is to try and establish as much root growth and get the plant established as established as possible before winter, if it is a, a perennial and it's going to stay outdoors or if it's a plant that will go dormant um, like hydrangeas and grapes do in our area. So if you have any questions, please drop me a question in the comment box below and I'll see you in the next one.